Hey everybody, I'm sometimes asked about uh, the differences between how a highway signal system works, signal systems we use when we're driving down the road, and how a railroad signal system works. And uh, they're pretty significant differences, so I'm going to do a short presentation on uh, how a railroad signal system works. Um, the biggest difference is that in a highway signal system, you're always acting on the signal that's in front of you. Uh, if it's green, you keep going. If it's uh, red, you stop. And if it's yellow, you know it's going to turn red in a predetermined amount of time. And you have that much time to come to a stop or, or gas it, try to beat the uh, yellow light. Uh, but uh, you are reacting to that signal. And in railroad signaling, uh, trainmen are reacting to the last signal they went by. When they went by that signal, it gave them information on what the next signal is doing at that time. And highway signals don't do that. They're only giving you information about what's happening at that intersection. So uh, with the train signal system, it's uh, designed on, uh, around braking distances and speeds. So obviously if a train signal system worked the same way a highway signal system works, there'd be a lot of problems because trains can't stop quickly if that signal turns yellow. They can't stop if that signal stays yellow for 10 seconds and then turns red. That would not work for trains. It takes trains a long time to stop. Even light trains take a while to stop. So anyway, uh, there are many... Uh, aspect and aspect is the information the signal provides to the uh, engineer uh, you have the color of a signal and we have just as within highway signals we have red yellow and green and uh, there are many different ways those signals can be shown to uh, present information to an engineer to tell them what they're going to be doing uh, trains obviously they don't have steering wheels and uh, so they, can't, uh, they don't have arrows that make them turn right or left. The signals give them information about the condition of the railroad ahead of them. Uh, They're designed to keep trains from uh, running into other trains. Uh, if there's a problem, say a broken rail or a switch lined against a train, they'll have a red signal. They'll have to come up. They'll have to stop at that signal and proceed at uh, what it, they'll do what is called flagging the block, which means they'll have to slow down to a speed no more than 20 miles an hour. It's called the half the distance rule. They can go no faster a speed than half the distance it would take to stop if they were to see another train, a broken rail, a switch line against them, things like that. As I said, there are many different aspects that can tell trains are going to go through one switch, then through another switch, and how fast they can go through that, all kinds of things. But we're just going to stick with the basics. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea of how train signal systems work. So come on along and I hope it makes sense to you. I hope it clears up some things for you. So here we go with how railroad signals work. Okay, at this point uh, I should uh, talk about the two basic types of signals we have. We have control signals and we have automatic signals. Control signals are so-called because they are located at control points. A control point can be an end of a siding, a crossover between uh, two main tracks, uh, uh, yards that have uh, entering and leaving tracks and crossovers, whatever, whatever uh, is determined needs to be controlled. We put in signals that can be controlled by a dispatcher and they're called control points. Those signals are as I said, control by a dispatcher. The dispatcher can clear those signals. He can line routes uh, straight up the main line into a siding, through crossovers, in, in and out of yards, whatever needs to be done, they can do that. Uh, if there is a problem and the dispatcher attempts to clear a signal and that signal won't clear, well, they don't know why. So that's when they call the signal department. They give us a call, we go out, we uh, try to figure out what's wrong, and we're generally successful at it. And once we get that problem fixed, the dispatcher can start running trains on clear signals again. In the meantime, they don't like to keep trains sitting for long periods of time. So what they will do is they will, the dispatcher will talk to the train on the radio when they come to that uh, control signal and give them permission to pass that signal. And the train will operate at restricted speed, 
which is what this called that's what the speed is called when they're flagging a block they'll operate at restricted speed until they come to a clear signal once the head end of the train passes a clear automatic signal they can uh, proceed up to maximum authorized speed as long as nobody's told them not to uh, in some cases the problem if the problem is way down towards the other control point they'll never get a clear signal until they get to the next control point uh, all the intermediates will be red but anyway I'm getting ahead of myself I'm, the automatic signals are the intermediate signals between control points and they are just what the name implies they're automatic uh, if everything is okay on either side of the signal the signals in both directions will be clear whether that clear is green or yellow or whatever doesn't matter but both signals are normally in the clear position and the only time that changes is when a dispatcher clears a signal in one direction all the signals in the opposite direction do what's called tumble down they will all turn red uh, between the control points and, uh, and the only other time is if there's a problem develops if a switch gets out of adjustment if a rail breaks piece of metal across the tracks anything at all that could cause a problem cause the signal to be red so anyway those are the two basic types of signals automatic and control okay let's get on with the uh, signals uh, the most important signal we have in my opinion should be in everybody's opinion is the red signal red is stop and that means uh, at a control point don't proceed without permission at an intermediate signal and an automatic signal uh, proceed at restricted speed uh, that is what keeps trains from running into other trains uh, anything that might be on the sometimes cars or trucks get stuck on the tracks it shorts the track out and uh, causes the signal to be red a switch could be lined whatever uh, the red signal protects against a train just barreling into a problem uh, so in my opinion that is the most important signal the signal system is all about safety and our mantra is what if if there's one chance in a billion that something could happen the signal system needs to protect against that and uh, that goes for all aspects of the signaling system whether it's uh, train signals or crossings but anyway so the red signal is stop do not pass this signal without complying with whatever instructions apply to that particular signal. Okay, uh, the next signal we have, and I'm going from the most restrictive, which is red, and again the color is red, the aspect is stop. And now the next restrictive signal is uh, yellow. That is the color, approaches the aspect. And uh, when a train sees a yellow signal, that's telling him that right then, at that time, the next signal, once he passes that yellow signal, the next signal is red. And the train would have to proceed past that yellow signal according to the rules governing that part of the railroad. Uh, if you're up the valley where the track speeds are much higher, uh, 50 60 miles an hour those rules will be a little different than up on the mountain where the track speeds 23 miles an hour but uh, it all comes down to the same thing the train has to proceed past the yellow signal assuming that the next signal he comes to is going to be red or stop uh, when he gets to that signal especially he's following another train by the time he gets to that next signal it may be yellow again and that's why we have the signal set up the way we do so trains can follow each other more closely if the train ahead of him is uh, moving faster than he is for some reason say they're going up the hill into Hatchby you got a light train ahead of a heavy train the light trains gonna get on ahead of him and by the time he gets to that next signal it uh, may, be, may be even less restrictive, maybe a flashing yellow, which is the next signal we come to. The flashing yellow signal, advance approach. Uh, 
that tells the train when it goes by the flashing yellow signal that the next signal he's going to see will be yellow. There again, it could be a different aspect by the time he gets there. It could be green. It could drop back. He could be catching a train a little faster or coming up on a problem. Uh, so the flashing yellow signal tells the train that the next signal at that time is yellow. And uh, the importance of the flashing yellow signal, this is, it just makes, makes it more efficient. Uh, back when there were just red, yellow, and green signals, uh, trains had to obviously go slower as, as they approached a potential problem or following behind another train. The flashing yellow signal is actually giving a train information from two signals ahead. It's telling him that the next signal is right now is yellow and the next signal beyond that is red. Gives him plenty of time to react to the yellow signal as they approach it and if that uh, yellow signal doesn't change, if its aspect doesn't change, then they'll have to continue to slow down and be prepared to stop. However, if everything is moving along ahead of it and they're not coming up on a problem or a, or a control point where a dispatcher is going to stop them, let another train pass or something, those signals will continue to be less and less restrictive where they will have a flashing yellow and then after the flashing yellow they'll have the next signal we come to which is green. Uh, the green signal is the go signal. doesn't mean peel out and go, it just means that is a clear signal. That means that all the signals for at least four blocks ahead of that train at that time are all clear, uh, usually all green. And that is the optimum uh, efficiency that we have on the railroad. And that's, that's how we keep trains running fast. The more green signals they have, the faster everything gets to Walmart or the Chevy dealership and we like green signals as long as they're supposed to be green. And uh, the other signal that I want to talk about is the yellow over yellow. Uh, yellow over yellow is approach diverging route. That means when a train sees that at an intermediate signal that means that he is approaching a siding and the dispatcher has lined the switch into the siding or into a, through a crossover, whatever that move may be, but he knows that he is going to go through the next turnout, gets him prepared to do that, to make that move. And when he gets to the end of the siding, if he's going through that, he will have, uh, it, it depends on the speed of the turnout, but he could have a red over yellow a red over green, a red over flashing red, it just depends. But the yellow over yellow is telling the train that he is going to make a move through a switch at the next control point. Okay, well, those are the uh, basic signals we use. And as I said, there is an entire section in our rule book, in the general orders, uh, special system instructions. We have a lot of different uh, pieces of information that we use to uh, operate everything on the railroad, but where the signal aspects are concerned, we have a whole section in the books about the different aspects. And earlier I said we had single-headed and double-headed. Sometimes we have triple-headed signals. It just depends on the application. But uh, there are dozens, literally dozens of different aspects that uh, the trainmen have to be uh, they're, they're trained on this. They're constantly, they have training. They have to have vision tests. They have to have a color tests for color blindness. They have to do that regularly. Uh, they have to learn a lot of stuff. The engineers and conductors, the guys that run these trains, uh, they have to keep a lot of information in their head. And they can't forget it. They can't be wrong about it. And uh, but there's a lot more to being a locomotive engineer than just sitting up there and uh, looking cool at crossings. Uh, and then couple of other pieces that I have planned will get into some of the other things that these guys have to know how to do. But anyway, those are the basics of how a railroad signal system works as opposed to how 
a highway signal system works. I hope that helped. I hope it didn't cause more questions than answers. But if you do have questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, shoot me an email. And uh, if I can answer any of your questions, I will. Thanks for tagging along, and we'll see you all later.